This is Twit. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the phone number. Steve's in Anaheim. Our next call. Hi, Steve. Hello, Lee. Yeah, thanks for hanging on. Thank you. Uh, my question is simply um, for us iTunes users that have PCs, not Macs. Yeah. We have an I, iPhone. I feel for you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you probably already figure what I'm going to ask, and that's uh, how do we negotiate or what would your suggestion for our options if we want to sync our iPhone? I have an iPhone 11 with iTunes after March 31st. I'm hearing the rumor that uh, Apple's no longer going to support uh, syncing uh, iPhone they, to they, a Mac. They will come up with uh, something because too many iPhone users have Windows. So right. how in heaven's name could they, you know, way back in the earliest days of the iPod, Steve Jobs fought against the notion of a Windows version. And fortunately, his executive said, Steve, you're nuts. You know, we can't just sell iPods to Mac users. And they persuaded him to make a Windows version. And bad as it was, because iTunes has, on Windows has always been god-awful, right. they sold far more iPods on Windows than they did on Mac because more Windows users. So they're shutting down the iTunes music downloads. There's no way they're going to shut down the syncing without giving you some alternative. Too many people have a... They don't want to say to Windows users, oh, you shouldn't have an iPhone. I mean, I'm sure they'd love you to buy a Mac, but that's that's not big enough of a business for them to do that. Well, last week when I called Apple, they told me that basically they're just... I mean, they didn't admit it, but they were trying to tell me in between the lines that they just want to force everybody to go to the cloud. Yeah, well, so, so first of all, that's not happened on the Mac. What they did on the Mac is they separated the syncing out from music. They actually took iTunes and turned it into three different programs. And the syncing is now part of the Finder on the Macintosh. All of that stuff is just completely out of iTunes. So I suspect there will be some similar solution for Windows users. It has to be. Where it might be a little program you download that syncs. There'll be a way to do it. They would it would be suicide for them to say, Oh no, you gotta all do it in the, you gotta all do it in the cloud. That's BS. Now, I should point out that the tr the trend is their friend, not yours, because People are no, just not buying music. We we're just talking about this. Uh, you know, almost all the music now is streamed, and so they figure, well, you'll have Apple Music on your phone. What do you want to sync it for? You got every, you got twenty million songs in your phone, just by playing for Apple Music. So in that regard, you're right. I think Apple, you know, would just love it uh, if you would stop buying music. But what we've all bought music. We, I have, I don't know how many gigabytes of music, a hundred or something. Uh, I want to be able to put those on my phone. I want to be able to sync those up. What if I'm in an airplane? How do I listen to music in an airplane? What's your solution there, Apple? Well, you just cache it from your Apple Music, and you, it'll be there sort of, and you hope anyway. And It's just dopey. So they will they have to. Now, if they don't, <laughs> then I'll be yelling at them. Is the answer. <laughs> but I, I just can't imagine that they would just cut off people like that. Just well, thank you, Lee. Thank you for your answer. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, I hope you're right. Um, they are, in the long run, figuring, well, you know, who's going to sync music? But we, if you've bought music, and and until recently, that was how you listened to it, you, you own it. And there's got to be some way to put it on your iPhone. That would be a uh, the kiss of death. Now, there are third-party solutions. I don't think Apple is... Uh, is going to promote these, but for a long time, there have been a number of good ways to sync from uh, Windows, better ways, frankly, than iTunes. Um, I'm trying to remember the one that uh, I, I, I like a lot and I've used for a long time. It's, um, golly, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. Um, I think that might be the other th solution is, is just these third-party apps that will sync just fine. This one was created by uh, a guy who had written software to unprotect uh, music. See, it's too, it's too big a business for Apple. And by the way, Apple's iTunes is the number one retailer of music, at least in America, if not the world. Uh, they still sell a lot of music on iTunes. In fact, I make a point of it. If there's an artist I really like 
or an album I really like, I don't just listen to it on streaming because I know artists make a penny or, you know, a tenth of a penny for stream. They give them nothing, nothing. So I will buy that uh, album on iTunes to, to support them. What was the name of it? I want to say Diamond. Oh, there was a very nice syncing program that ran on Windows. It ran on iOS. It ran on Android. It was a really good way to sync it. Even uh, synced. Is it sank? <laughs> Even synced your your uh, playlists and all that stuff. They double twist. Thank you. That was the name of it. I knew the chat room would remember. They're my they're my memory memory bank. Let me see if Double Twist is still around. Apple does say you'll be able to continue to use iTunes to sync. You just won't be able to download or buy music. Take a look at Double Twist. Um, they still will sync iTunes playlists, ratings, play counts, and music uh, to your iPhone. And they'll do it wirelessly as well as wired, I think. <sighs> there are, other, I'm sure, other solutions as well. Because Apple's iTunes was always so bad. Boy, that would be infuriating. Doubletwist.com. Thank you. For, thank you for remembering that, Golem. <laughs> That's the program I was trying to remember. 